Uh, good evening and welcome to the uh, Maternity and Midwifery Hour. Um, I'm not Sue McDonald. Uh, I know that many of you uh, tune in every week from around the world uh, to hear what Sue has today. My name is Neil Stewart and I'm the Editorial Director of the Maternity and Midwifery Festivals. Uh, Sue is actually having a break this week. I'm going to start off by just uh, sending everybody uh, her, her thanks to her for the incredible job that she's been doing over the past year. These maternity midwifery hours were started as soon as the lockdown began in March. And Sue has uh, diligently turned up with uh, innovative insights and programs every single week. Uh, she's brought in people not just from across the UK, but from around the world and tackled some of the most difficult issues. Uh, remember those early days in the pandemic when home births were canceled, uh, water births seemed to be ruled out. Lots of facilities were closed or maternity facilities were taken over for uh, COVID use. Uh, tremendous uh, change that we've all been through in the past year. And Sue's been guiding us through that. So hopefully she's sat with a chilled glass of uh, Chardonnay. Uh, hopefully she's not watching because I'm bound to get everything wrong as I go through. So tonight's uh, programme uh, is jointly hosted with All for Maternity, our partners who work with us on the festivals um, and across these maternity and midwifery hours. And we're going to take a look at one of the e-learning modules that they have produced, uh, one of their Safer Together modules, an introduction to culture, race and bias in midwifery. And I'm joined tonight by uh, Alicia Burnett, who's a final year student midwife in London and who some of you will have seen on this program before. She's also the Editor-in-Chief of the Student Midwife Journal uh, and uh, co-founder and curator of the COVID-19 cohorts blog hosted on the All for Maternity site. And uh, she's done some fantastic work. Uh, and she's joined by uh, Sheridan Thomas, who's an independent midwife who works with the uh, trusts uh, and care providers across the North West. So um, let me start with Shara then. What's your moment of the week? Hello. Nothing to do with midwifery. What's your moment of the oh, week? Oh, my moment of the week, sort of to do with midwifery, but more so to do with myself. So I am 26 weeks pregnant and today I had a growth scan and my baby is growing exactly where it should be, which is great news. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> uh, and Alicia, what's your moment of the week? Uh, I'm afraid my, my moment of the week is a bit midwifery related to <laughs> I had a lovely socially distanced meeting with my good good friend Ali Monahan in my back garden this week I've missed Ali so so much we're always in contact via whatsapp but it was so nice to be in her presence physically so that's my highlight of the week yeah. okay well I'm three days through going swimming for every single day of this week now that they finally um, opened my swimming pool again uh, so I am extremely happy about that. So um, before we come to our two guests and the uh, Safer Together e-learning modules, uh, let me just uh, uh, cover some of the other news of the week. Um, I was going to start off rather flippantly and say that uh, this week was the second episode of uh, Call the Midwife, uh, which is, of course, how a great many people seem to get their ideas about what happens in midwifery. Um, but it was also a week that's been full of lots of other news. Uh, and in particular, we're now beginning to see, and we've seen this all the way through the pandemic, uh, the emergence of big data and its ability to tell us things that, about how maternity midwifery services are being run that nobody was collecting in the days of Call the Midwife. Um, so early on, we began to see there, there were differences in the experience of uh, women of different races, different ethnic backgrounds, and interestingly also uh, of different levels of income and class. And the detail of the kind of data that we are now getting um, is beginning to change the conversation about maternity and midwifery. Uh, many people will see that in the press at the moment, there are some quite critical streams that are running. And The Lancet this week in the news has been publishing figures on uh, miscarriages. 
and uh, on a very big study in which they point out that some of the collection of statistics in the UK is not very good, but on a big international study, that anything up to one in seven women are experiencing miscarriages, that services often don't click in, kick in until women have had two or three miscarriages. Um, and of course, their headline was that women of uh, color and ethnic minorities are likely to have a 40% higher rate of miscarriages. So this is the kind of big data that's coming through all the way through pregnancy and is starting to come out again uh, in the period afterwards. And midwives and other healthcare professionals are having to address that. In addition, we are beginning to see in the press and a study from Oxford suggesting that pregnant mothers should be vaccinated and perhaps moved up the list uh, higher than they would if they were just coming through through their, uh, through their age profile. Um, and this kind of debate is going to, again, impact and change the way that maternity services uh, have to be organized. And after these headlines, I'm sure lots of midwives are um, facing those kinds of questions. Um, as we do every week, uh, even though the numbers of deaths from coronavirus actually looked as though they fell below 10 at the weekend, they're currently running at a weekly average of about 23. Um, but we still have to remember uh, not just the uh, mothers and babies that have been lost, but also midwifery and maternity colleagues, uh, and that the risks are still out there. There are still new variations. And as we watch the terrible uh, pictures from India, I think it uh, is a warning to everybody about the importance of uh, vigilance. Um, so a lot going on and uh, maternity and midwifery services uh, doing very well to keep things as normal as possible and uh, get everything back and open on the roadmap. But lots of questions ahead. But there is no doubt that one of the biggest impacts on the discussion of services during the pandemic has been the way in which uh, people of different cultures and race have faced either uh, poorer service or bias or worse outcomes. And the world of big data is now opening up these questions. And we've seen that all the way through. Obviously, what happened around George Floyd triggered a great many questions, but it was obvious that uh, the NHS England and Jackie Dunkley Benton, our colleagues, have had work going on uh, right through the whole period, much of which is going to come to fruition. And uh, people are now trying to find the answers to that. How do we respond? How do we tackle it? And uh, the work that we're going to look at tonight is part of that. Uh, All for Maternity are to be congratulated tremendously for the material that they put together online. And tonight we're going to look at uh, Safer Together, one of their e-learning modules. Uh, the title is An Introduction to Culture, Race and Bias in uh, midwifery practice under the heading of Safer Together. So can I introduce uh, Sheridan Thomas, who's an independent midwife, works with trusts in the northwest of England, and has been behind and uh, working with all the maternity to put together uh, this uh, material. And she'll be speaking and sharing the presentation with uh, Alicia Burnett, who is a final year student midwife in London, and she's also the editor in chief of the student midwife. So, uh, time to share your slides. Over to you. The screen is yours, uh, Sheridan. Thanks for watching this video from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. For more expert opinion and analysis, hit the button below to subscribe.